Hi, and welcome back to the Digital Job Site for this part two of two of videos that I'm, I've done for the Switch Up to Sketch Up blog post at the Digital Job Site blog at findhomebuilding.com. In part one, we went through some ways of modifying a design, creating, changing proportions, etc., and making a comparison between using the Scale tool and the Move tool. And as I said in that video, I wanted to do a part two where I show the steps I use to create the component, uh, a raised panel door, which you can see the some of the detail here. And also to show how to use the follow me tool and create this um, crown molding profile for the, this part of the of the mantle. So, in order to do that, I'm just going to zoom out, delete this extra working cabinet that we used for the first, first part. And I think what I'll do is just go and just jump in here and create a cabinet door similar to these. Because this, these walls are part of a group, that I created earlier for this other model. I can just draw on the surface of this and uh, I'll just, I've just taken the, the square rectangle tool and let's say a cabinet door. Let's just make it 18 comma 32. Whatever size door you're, you're making, that's good a way as any to get it. And make it a standard three quarters of an inch thick which I'll type in as 0.75 and and now I just double click on this face and then click again with the shift key and it deselects the face and just takes the outline of that door then I'll grab the offset tool and let's just come in here 2.5 inches and then double click this rectangle Take the offset tool and we'll just come in another inch. Actually, I'm going to back up a step here. There we go. Um, we've got that first offset. I'll take the push-pull tool and push this back in a half inch, 0.5. And now we'll take the offset tool and come one inch in. All right. So you can kind of see how these various shapes come together. And the fun part about this is making that raised panel door. You can spend a lot of time dinking around with drawing angles and, and such to get the bevel. But a real quick way to do this, I've selected this interior face that I made on purpose. I made it an inch smaller all the way around than the opening it sits in. Now when I, I grab the move tool, and you look at the bottom of the screen, you could say, you can see where it says Alt equals Toggle Auto Fold. So what we want to do is grab this middle face and auto fold it. And I want to auto fold it by holding down the Alt key and the left arrow. So now when I pull this, you can see how it drags all those corners at the same time. And by holding that, uh, by holding those keys, I'm going to type in. 3 slash 8. So what I've done is pulled that center of that panel out 3 eighths of an inch and it auto folded and put all the, uh, the these little angles that you would get if you were making this type of a panel on a shaper. And then the next step that I'll use is to take the push-pull tool and pull this out and I'm just indexing this face which brings it out an eighth of an inch. You can see how it gives it this little raised edge. So with those with those steps, steps, the main one being using the auto fold feature of the move tool, you can quickly draw this raised panel uh, uh, door. And it doesn't have all the joinery in there. A person could go through and create styles and rails, that sort of thing, if you wanted to have um, uh, varying uh, rails for the top and or the bottom. You can just you know move this up if you wanted to have a, 
a three inch rail or a, a four inch rail at the bottom for some scale. You can see how easy it is to make that change. You could do that either before or after creating this raised panel. But once we have this um, uh, geometry created, I can just I can group that geometry. If I was making doors for upper and lower cabinets, I could take this. I've uh, taken the move tool and hit control, and just that makes a, an exact duplicate of that. If I knew on the upper part of the cabinets, maybe there's uppers and uppers and lowers. If those doors were going to be smaller, I can just uh, change this, change the size of the door, make it four inches shorter if we want. And, and because I left this geometry as a group and not as a component, I've only changed this instance. And you can always go in, explode that, and then make it a component. We call that door, create. And now we have a door component. So if I take that door and move it and want to do anything with this, we can color this with the color we already have in the model. You can see it creates, it changes the color on both of those doors. Anything I do to this door is going to happen to the other one. If we make it narrower, it happens to both of them. If we want to change uh, other attributes of this, whatever we do to one happens to the other. There's other ways of making these, oops, that was a miscabobble there. If, there's other ways of changing attributes of these things with the move tool, the push pull tool, various things like that. So in a nutshell, that's how to create a cabinet door. I'm just going to leave that geometry in there and it, when I'm done with this video, I'll upload this model to the SketchUp component warehouse where if you'll search, um, if you go into window components, You'll be able to type in this box right here, switch up to SketchUp, and this model will show up. Okay, so the other thing I was going to do is show how to create this crown molding that was used under the mantle. And as you can see, it's it's pretty, it's so simple to change the size of things that it's almost easier just to create a generic size and then adjust it to what you want instead of... Um, but alternately, you can you can say I want this mantle. Uh, oops. You can say I want this uh, mantle or the crown molding to be six inches wide and eighty four inches long, whatever. And start out with that. So uh, I'm just going to go in and uh, same difference here. Just create a. Um, uh, generic shape here and let's just go 72 comma 10 which would give us a rectangle to work with. I'm just going to jerk this thing up with the push-pull tool and all I'm doing in this process is uh, is creating a path for the follow me tool. I'm just going to throw this geometry into a group so it behaves and on the face of this I can draw a piece of crown molding. Let's say this stuff is going to stick out 3.5 inches and be 5 inches tall. And let's say 6 inches tall. Oops, I'll have to type a 6 to get 6 inches tall. So all I'm doing is, is uh, creating a surface here on which to draw a piece of crown molding. So I'm just going to come down here half an inch and let's see, we'll I'll throw a guideline in here so we can follow. I can see when the, that circle turns green, I know that guideline's on the end of my little line. And let's go in here a quarter of an inch, 0.25, and come up 0.75. I'm out here, 0.75. You'll kind of see what I'm doing here in a minute. Now I can take a line tool, put that line in, draw an arc, and I'm just making this up as I go. If you're 
um, trying to trying to match a crown molding, you can take measurements from that crown molding or go into the quick and slick crown molding example that I created some time back and see the process of using, using photo match to completely uh, and accurately trace a particular crown molding profile that you might be using. So I'm just going back into wing it mode. Let's go 5 16 here and then I'm going to grab the protractor tool and show you what I, I'll do to create the uh, the reverse curves that make up a crown molding. I just took the protractor tool and put it on the end of this line and swung it up to the intersection of that line and that kind of gives you gives me a just a rough idea of the um, the angle that I want these curves to show up as so you can see what I did there I just had that that um, guide as a general um, guide to where where to put these curves so all I'm doing is you can see where that line turns that green color that those curves are are tangent at the uh, at that point. And this is going to be kind of an ugly crown molding because I didn't spend much time uh, with the proportions, but uh, just wanted to show you how to the steps I use to create a crown molding profile. I got rid of those guidelines a little too soon, so I'm going to go in and. Create a parallel line to this, 0.75, as if I was milling this crown molding out of three-quarter inch thick material. And by zooming in, I can pick the points I want. And so once I've completed the uh, that face, you can see how it flashes into this Z mode, Z flashing mode, so I know that I've got a a completed crown profile. Now I can get rid of all these guidelines and what we end up with is a profile. So I'm just going to make this a group temporarily here so that I can, it's a little easier to move. Let's put a guideline in. I'm clicking this top of our make a box here now with the Guideline moving in the blue direction, the vertical direction, I'm just going to index the bottom of that crown molding. And that gives us a point to move this little guy to. Just want him to line up like that. Actually, that was a waste of time. Let's just stick it up here. Get rid of that line. All right, so now what we have is a profile. I'm just zooming in here to make sure my corners are touching. And uh, this top of this box, I'm just going to retrace this. So what I have is, by, uh, I just drew another rectangle on top of that box and then by double clicking I selected the the rectangle and its uh, the face and its borders and then by holding shift, I got rid of the face. Oops, there it came back. And by hitting shift again, what you can see is a highlighted blue line and, uh, that I want to use for a path. And because I neglected a step, which is to explode this profile, it's um, when I click the follow me tool and this, it's not it's not doing the follow me function that I wanted to. So if you were doing that and you ended up frustrated, you can understand why uh, why those things happen. It's a technicality. I've got to explode this group. Okay, now I go back through the steps. I double click this, hold down shift, get rid of the face and the back line. Select the follow me tool and this profile and it creates the it creates a mantle with the crown molding that we were using 
uh, the profile we created. I get rid of this line. I select all this and make it a group. And then you're, you can go back to the methods that I used in the first video to create that crown molding. And you can adjust this for size and depth, for width, whatever adjustments you want to make. And as a final step, I'm going to grab the paint bucket tool. And by holding down the Alt key, you can see the bucket turns into an eyedropper. So if I grab the color off those doors and then paint the crown molding, I've, uh, I've selected it, put the cherry finish on it uh, like I used before. So uh, I guess I've elaborated enough on that. I hope I didn't bore you too bad. But uh, I'll go in and export or I mean upload this model into the SketchUp component warehouse under the switch up to SketchUp title so you can go in and play around with any of these components and and uh, if that'll help you understand or see a little better how the ability SketchUp has can help you make the switch and go and go to digital with your design. Thanks for watching, and make sure to stop by the digital job site blog at findhomebuilding.com for the dialogue that goes with these, or some text that goes with these videos. Thanks for watching.